Lewis, I'm the Fairy Voice Mother and today I'm going to be reacting to Chris Stapleton performing Tennessee Whiskey live at Austin City Limits. The first comment that comes up below this video is, this is my neighbour's favourite song whether he likes it or not. I have heard the official audio of this song before, I do know it, but this request came up so many times for this live performance, so I'm really interested to see if it does differ from the version that I know. It's gonna be really exciting to see him in action. I'm excited for some live vibes and hopefully some laryngeal visuals, but we'll see. Oh, hi. Thank you for being my friend unconditionally for no other reason apart from that you enjoy my company. You can't have these because I have chocolate on. I know it's not fair. It's not fair at all. But you're so young still. You've got so much more life to live. We can do some voice analysis. Used to spend my nights out of the boardroom. <laughs> oh my god. He sounds the exact same as a recording. Look who was the only love I'd known. <laughs> but you rescued me from reaching for the bottom. I do have mixed feelings about this rather lustrous beard. On one hand, it looks fantastic. But on the other hand, it is greatly impeding my view. Not a very good window. Used to spend my nights out. A really classy use of twang. So bloody good, wow. He's lifting his voice and then the addition of the technique that we refer to as twang, which is where you slightly close the epiglottis over the folds, giving it that kind of smaller, more small sound. And it's a really useful technique to use actually because it can give us loads of control. The high notes feel a little bit more accessible because the voice doesn't have to work as hard as it usually would to produce them. So some of his notes he decides to drop the twang altogether. Quite an open heavy belt at the top there that he then maneuvers down with a very heavy larynx position to get that warmth. It's very impressive how he can just fade that out. No. I love how he seems to deliver every line as like an individual gift. Each line is its own statement. Look was the only love I've known And brought me back from being too far gone his wife which is very sweet you don't think that's cute I think it's cute it's nice to be in love <laughs> go and have a light down now those backing vocals were not easy to sing as well from a timing perspective specifically the timing is very loose and laid back you know because of the genre and the whole thing where we're drunk and on love and stuff so it's actually very impressive the way that she kind of looks at him and lines up the phrases and the melody to suit his timing behind every good man is a woman who observes his mouth movements to line their backing vocals up my glasses are so foggy good lord You're this 
dropped wide jaw is really handy for descending riffs in particular because you can guide it down and encourage the larynx to move in those significant steps. This wah at the beginning has given his voice a little bit of a suspension which you can then visually see him manipulate down as the notes descend, moving the physical noggin. Whoa, there's a glass of brandy. He's so stable and his voice is so strong that with those little kind of vibrations and some mental focus, that riff is just gonna pop down no problem. His voice is also quite heavy in this position as well, which is a really clever thing to do for a descending riff because in this heavier uh, speechy position, your voice is anchored, which means it wants to come back down. It would actually be more difficult to do whoa because the voice is lighter and more floaty and ready to go upwards. So these descending notes are gonna sound full and heavy as the voice slacks. The most challenging thing about nailing the descending riff from this position is getting the larynx to stop at every single point in the note pattern. If it doesn't, we get this. Like a slide. That's what makes it cool. Which he is obviously doing marvelously well. I'm actually gonna whip out the old Headphones. Look for love in all the same old places, y'all. Found the bottom of the bottles always dry. Oh! Check this, check this now. But when you pulled out your heart, I didn't waste it. Oh, amazing dynamics. Goodness me. Because there's nothing. Like your love to give me Oh, he's filthy! The voice production is so dirty and distorted and luscious. Oh, I love it. And isn't it cute the way he looks at his wife? Chris, what a stand-up guy. Such intelligent and appropriate use of all of the techniques in his arsenal at the exact right time. When he wants to do the big sustain note. <laughs> he decided to use twang. <laughs> because this vocal process is so small and controlled. You can just hold it on forever and you can just kind of keep sliding up and everyone loses their mind. But then when he does the very distorted stuff, it just lasts for a little blip. Little kind of little distorted moment, little moments. That's just so enjoyable because the execution of every line is perfect. There's no mistakes. Oh, so good. Found the bottom of the bottles always. Bottom! <laughs> it's an easy place to add distortion because the pressure gets built up behind the lips, kind of opens the throat a little bit and encourages some nice spacious flapping to occur. That plosive bottom. <laughs> bottom of the bottle. Uh, so that was that was really good. A little cheeky glimpse of its tongue gear. Getting the tongue out of the way is a classic tried and proved technique that many people who distort their voice use. It's very effective because the tongue starts here and it bunches up on top of the vocal folds, right? So if we extend it, that pressure is somewhat relieved. <laughs> So if you're wondering what the likelihood of this distortion hurting his voice is, I would say extremely low. I don't think this is hurting him at all. I think this feels great. Oftentimes when people report symptoms of strain and pain, strain and pain, the name of my new metal band, strain and pain is a much less deceptive name for the workout class leg bums and tums. I don't know if you've ever been to one. It sounds kind of cute and fun, but it's, it's not cute or fun. <laughs> strain and pain. Anyway, when people experience pain and distortion, it's usually because everything's too bunched up and constricting. All the while, the singer is trying to get stuff to move in there because they intuitively know that that's how they do it. They move extra stuff, but everything's constricted, so you're trying to move stuff in this tiny space, and then disaster ensues. And if it did cause disturbance and upset in his voice, there's no way that he would be able to come in and out of the twang position and do riffs and all other separate extended vocal techniques as well as this. You're oh, they're such a sexy couple, aren't they? God!
I read that they have like many, many children and I can see why. <laughs> oh, I love them. You're as wild as a glass of brandy. Oh. Oh. <laughs> melodic inflections that they seem to add in every one of the choruses. It's so subtle but so effective. Just a tiny little semitone difference makes you just, you know, it just makes you wince in a really good way. They know what they're doing. Mm. 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 I love the roller coaster of dynamics. In one moment he's screaming at you from the depths of his soul and then the next moment it's just Genesee whiskey. And it really makes an audience hang on his every word. Everyone is just kind of waiting to see what he's going to do next. What is he going to do in the next line? Is it going to be a cash one? Is he going to scream at me? Is he going to do a riff? Is he going to growl? Is he going to twang? We don't know. It's so exciting. Oh, Tennessee whiskey. He spoke in the exact same position that he just sang in. Janice Whiskey. Good night. Very twangy speech. Oh, that's fascinating. That must be very prevalent in his accent. Twang is prevalent in many accents. South East London, where I'm from, has loads of twang in it. New York and Boston and many American accents actually have a lot of twang in them as well. And I guess his accent is no exception. I think that greatly contributes to his ability to use that technique in his singing as well, which is fascinating. That was just luscious, wasn't it? It's so bloody sexy. Their voices were kind of coming out of their mouths and then just meeting and making love in the room for everyone to behold in awe. That's the power of love. I want to watch some more spousal performances now. Is that a word? Because singing, obviously, there is an element of acting to it, but it's slightly more organic and personal, I think, than acting. To the point where, you know, you can pretend to be in love in a film and you can convince people and you can have like this kind of chemistry or whatever. But with singing, yeah, yes, we do act a little bit to kind of convey a story, but what it is more than acting is kind of an exacerbation of something that you already feel. Whenever performances hit us the most, it seems to be performed by someone who can relate to that experience. So it's just like a larger than life version of your own experience. So to have two people sing in a duet that are genuinely in love, like, oh, yeah, that's, that's, um, illuminating. I enjoyed that very much. Thank you so much for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed making it. If there are any singers you would like to see me react to, please do let me know down below in the comments or you can sign up to my Patreon and let me know via Discord as well. I have a Discord now and it's really fun. We do all kinds of cute stuff on it like share pictures of our pets and talk about 
stuff. So um, yeah, I hope to see you there. But either way, I will see you in the next video. Loads of love forever. Have an amazing day. Mwah, bye.